All right, this is Casey. He's your general inspector. Hi, how are you? And we have the sellers here as well. So we're going to have a full PAX panel discussion <laughs> on what Casey has found about the house. Okay, go All ahead. All right, first thing on the roof, um, there are you have a foam roof. And the characteristics of, of foam, foam roofs is that they'll blister every now and then. Okay. And so you have a couple blisters up there adjacent to the south evaporative cooler. Okay. You have two evaporative coolers up there. And uh, so you have some split blisters that I'd recommend having them sliced, removed, and, and repatched. Okay, so on a foam roof is that? That's foam? regular maintenance. That's every, regular maintenance. Every three years okay. or so you have to go up there and make sure that you don't have any blisters. So is that the only area that had the blisters yeah. is there? Okay. Also, there's a little section of electrical conduit above the master bedroom that's laying on top of the roof surface. It should have two by fours lifting it up off of that foam so that way it's not foamed over and attached to the foam roof, which it is now. Okay. So it should be lifted up, propped with two by four blocks with a little bracket that secures it to the blocks. Okay, and it's normal to have something going across the rooftop like that? Yeah, you have a bunch of stuff going across the rooftop, a bunch of conduit without an attic, you're gonna have stuff on a flat roof. Okay. Okay. It's a parapet wall, so none of it's visible from the, the ground. Okay. Um, and then you have a lot of electrical conduit up there that is done properly, just a little, um, probably about 15 foot section above the master bedroom that needs to be propped up. Okay. Um, the vent pipe to the heater that's in the garage and the water heater, they share the same vent pipe as they exit the roof. Should we go take a look at that? It's on the roof. Oh, okay. The vent pipe should be at least 24 inches above the roof surface and it's, it's flat up against it so it needs an extension to be code compliant. Okay, I've had you quote that to me a couple times at other inspections. <laughs> so, it's there, it's working, it's not been a problem, but by code, it's supposed to be 24 yeah, inches Yeah, because see, it. it's just gravity that feeds that gas fumes out, so okay. that's why they want them high enough above the roof surface so they can float around. If okay. they're too close, then you'll get backflow and combustion gases going back down the food Okay, pipe. so ideally that should be extended up, and there should be a cap on it. There imagine. is a cap already. Okay. Um, let's see here. Inside the main electrical panel that's located on the north side of the house, there was another circuit that was added where they penetrated the bottom of the metal panel with the conduit or with the wire. Yeah. And they did not put a, a little plastic bushing around that wire, so that wire is in contact with the metal panel. It just needs a plastic bushing to keep that from touching. Is that something metal. that's just basically added, clipped around, and yep. pushed up into it? Okay, so it's a relatively small fix. Here in the sub panel, there's a sub panel in the hallway behind that Beatles picture right there. Okay, so that's. When you open that panel, okay. there are multiple double tap neutral wires. So. Inside of electrical panel, there's usually a strip of screws. It's called a lug strip. Okay. And there should be one white wire going into each lug strip. Right. And you'll see in the picture that I send you, there's more than one wire. There's multiple two wires going into multiple lug strips, leaving some empty ones there. Okay. And so the solution is to have an take electrician out the, move those. Yes, on the record, yes. Take a, have an electrician take out those extras and put them in their own lug strip. Off the record, somebody just needs Handy. to move those things yeah, around. Mark usually does. <laughs> yeah, wait a second, I do that. <laughs> um, plumbing. The sink that's on the barbecue structure outside, there is a there is a slight leak on that drain pipe underneath the sink. Okay. The, uh, but it's outside. It's not damaging any cabinet. It's not damaging any floor. It's not producing any mold. It is outside, but it is leaking. Okay. So don't store nothing under there. Okay. The water heater that's in the garage. The water pipes on top of the water heater. Should you we want go to take a look at it? Okay. So the water. Oh, we good? Yeah. The water pipes on top of the water heater. The he said it's minor in nature, it's just to be code compliant because that's what I'm here for. These pipes right here should have that black foam insulation wrapped around them. Okay, and that's that okay. stuff that you put on and just tape it so it stays in place Correct. basically. Okay. Correct. That is okay. a big hot water heater. 75 gallon water heater. Strapped, it looks got like. Got a catch pan, that's great. It's a 2009 model. Okay. Okay. We've okay. never had cold water. <laughs> uh, let's see here. You have your air conditioners are located on the roof. Okay. Okay. Um, the air conditioner that goes to the main house is missing that black foam insulation on the copper refrigerant line oh, up okay. on the roof. Okay, so that should be there too. Mm -hmm. And then there, you have a little split unit that goes to the little casita out there on the roof. Right. And the disconnect for that is a, it's just literally a switch. Okay, but that switch is missing an exterior cover on the roof. So it just needs an exterior cover for that disconnect switch. Okay, so there's a it's bunch attached of just to the little split things. Unit. Okay, got it. Um, let's see here. And then again, you have two swamp coolers up on the roof. Okay. Okay. The one that's uh, the south unit. Okay. Okay. South unit. Water is leaking from the housing of that south unit dripping onto the roof. Okay. Okay. So that just means like the float may need to be adjusted where it's allowing too much water and it can't keep up with the float. Okay. More importantly though, the, those blisters that I mentioned earlier are adjacent to where that water is dripping. So okay. That's so why that we should be make adjusted. Sure that, that's why we want to make sure the blisters get patched and that's why we want to make sure that the water gets stopped. Okay. Okay. We're good.
So we're out on the north side. We're of the on house. the north side of the house here. Just noting, you got a little bit of blistered, pa blistered peeling plaster oh, top yeah. coat. Yeah. Got a little bit of peeling pl plaster top coat over here. Yeah. Got a little patched area right here that needs to be finished painted and everything. But that's it. That's all I really noted yeah. here. Minor yeah. stuff. Lots of palmettos. I don't know what these are, but great tree. Oh, uh, yeah, it is a, a, a palmetto. I'm gonna go over here to the barbecue. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so here we are in the barbecue structure. Okay. What I noted here in the barbecue structure is this gas line. See this flex gas line? Yeah. It's penetrating that concrete block. Yeah. It connects over here to the barbecue. Yeah. Technically, that pipe, that hard plumb pipe, should be on this side of it. <laughs> and then that valve and everything goes on that side underneath the barbecue. Oh man, you could find that anywhere. He goes, Usually it's at a furnace. Okay, so. <laughs> no, but yeah, flex gas line can never disappear. <laughs> okay, so technically it's supposed to be hard pipe all the way through there. And then the valve and that. the flex line are next to the component. Okay. 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 And then next is we're gonna go on a south side house to the shower. And the take, okay. One more thing on the on the barbecue, there's an electric there's an electric igniter that ignites it. It does not ignite it. You have to use one of these guys to ignite it. Yeah, which typically happens on the outside ones, they it die. It never has one. Okay. Yes. Watch out guys. The only oh. thing I'm noting is that these handles, they rotate in a complete circle. So you gotta find where off is or else your sour continue to drip. That's okay. the only thing I'm noting with that. Somebody hyper extended it at yeah. one point, and yeah. I think it was one of the gardeners or something, but yeah. Yeah. they so were. That's I the mean, only thing is you just gotta find where off is on these guys. Okay, so. you're right. And then you got a little bit of the peeling stuck with time. Okay, yeah. I put that in my visual inspection as well. Yeah. Um, lots and grounds right behind you, Mark. I just noted you got a little bit of uneven concrete right here that presents a trip hazard. So if you have any shufflers in the family, or anyone that's been drinking a little too much, just let them know that this is a trip hazard right here oh, on the south okay. side of the house. We'll keep that in mind. Um, and then see the, we'll keep going over here. We can cut it. Evaporative coolers, uh, you can probably correct me if I'm saying wrong, every five to six hours, um, they uh, eject okay. about five gallons of water. Okay. And we, when we had them put in, decided we were not gonna have that water just go all over the place. We wanted to capture it and when we have a chance put into the swimming pool that's why it's tagged to this line so when this is full we will in fact it's filling now we'll take that over there over so to the pool that to pick that up. okay yeah that's cool and we couldn't do that one because it's too close to the gate but like but like casey was saying somebody could put these two together and have them both come down so all of this would go in there if they okay. want to Okay, yeah. cool. It was just a way of conserving, uh, particularly when we had water issues, oh, yeah. you know, a couple of years okay. ago. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's now you got a little bit of missing a little concrete trim up there on the, on the north side of the house, or south side of the house. There. So I did notice a few areas of the concrete trim. That was patched? Well, they're disintegrating. You can see like the way that you can see the stuff yeah. that makes them. I'm assuming that just happens with time. Yeah. That's what's going on. It's just weather. And That's like the way that, it's been since we bought it. Yeah. Oh, it was like that when you got it too? Okay. Okay, and then... Oh, and here we are, the exciting walk them up. So I just noted I called it the north gate, or the gate on the north side of the driveway here. You got some loose hinges right here on this, so you kind of have to like pick it up in order to shut it. So we got a little bit of loose hinges due to the weight of the, the wood, but okay. again, minor stuff. Nothing's really detrimental. Okay. Hey, Bill, the day. <laughs> and we'll go back over to the pool pump and your pool filter are located in this below grade pit down here. Okay. Okay. Which is real common for um, this race. The only thing I noted in there is the there's a slight leak from the housing to the pump. So the pump does drip a little bit inside of that okay. uh, moisture area there. And the other thing I noted is that the pool does not have the proper it does it's missing a drain cover on the pool surface there. So you need a you need a you need the proper drain cover on the pool. Oh, so people don't get sucked on right. well, small children. Their hair get don't get pulled in there or anything like that. Exactly. Okay. Now, as far as the equipment is concerned, everything seemed to be working. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pool light. Oh, the only thing I noted also is I did not see a GFCI circuit for the pool light, but the pool light may be, may be LED. I would confirm with a pool guy to make it's, sure it's below the proper voltage. That's definitely LED. Okay. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah there's certain voltage. Yeah. There's a voltage level for LEDs that require no GFCI protection. Yeah. And I would check with the pool guy and make sure that it's, that's the right size bulb that would not require the GFCI protection for the LED light. If not, then it, then we need to install a GFCI circuit between the switch and the light. It's definitely uh, uh, 
LED. And like, here's the big LED. Because I can change the color for you right now and show yeah. you. Yeah, no, it's definitely and, LED. Yeah. It's just yeah. a, there's a, there's oh, a voltage oh, level. Oh, 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 there's a voltage level on the LED that require GFI and then it, one oh. that doesn't. So it depends on the voltage right. level of that. And everything else is bonded. And, yeah, and heater's grounded, uh, pump's grounded. There's no valves to turn. The heater ignites, it's manual. The pool light, there's two switches for the pool light. Both of them turn them on. And this is an auto refill feature on the on the pool too, or is it just a manual refill manual. on the pool? Manual. 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 Okay. It's, it's the swamp cooler. Okay. Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. All right. We're inside. All right. So we got fireplace number one here in the living room. Okay. Right. You have a gas line that goes in that fireplace. So there's a damper that opens and closes to the chimney. That's not allowed to close all the way. It's required to have a little clamp on it. So when you go to close it, it stays open just a tad. Okay. Somebody leaves that gas valve on. The fumes can go out. Or even if you're using the fireplace, you, <laughs> you don't have any carbon monoxide producing elements in the house. Yeah. Okay. It's missing that four dollar part. <laughs> so basically, it's like a little lamp that goes on the baffle, so that the baffle doesn't shut. All Correct. Time. Okay. Correct. And we'll go to the master bedroom. Okay. So here, same thing in here. This is the master bedroom fireplace. Noted. There's no ember screen, no door, nothing that's going to stop anyone from sticking their hands in there and getting burnt. Also, a fireplace requires 16 inches of non-flammable hearth in front of it so that no embers fall on a burning a carpet and burning. So you gotta have something non-flammable in front of the fireplace. Okay, by, also, by, it's missing by that code. Yes. Yeah, by code. So, also, it's missing that seat clamp. So this is a whole lot of code things that most people yeah, blow don't, off. don't necessarily have. <laughs> okay, got it. That's not a problem. Okay, so we're in a bedroom here. Yeah. It gets stuck on the in, inside the carriage. Yeah. It's difficult to open and close. Okay, so we're doing oh. mystery solving. So this is not working quite the way. However, they converted this over from being a uh, bar and the shelf just got on the wall. And, and there's a screw that's going into this. So that's my thing because it used to open yeah. and close. Which we never did, but it would. Okay, <laughs> so technically, if the screw, well, we'll probably have to figure that out at some point. Anyway, I think that's something you know, like there's that. There's probably a long screw off. going into the carriage. Just it, take the I used one like this, but I didn't think about it because. Look. All right, yeah. so that was a lack of planning. We're not yeah. going to give it a lack of planning on that one, but. It's a good thing I'm here. <laughs> exactly. And everything else in here was okay, Casey? Yep. Okay, and in general, we still have more to look at, or? Uh, no. Well, okay. um, the only thing I'm noting also just in the house was built in 1980. They, you know, but it's the desert, and it, again, it wasn't really enforced. But when you have a crawl space, you should have insulation on the subfloor, on a crawl space to give you that insulation that you wouldn't have in an attic. Oh since right. You don't have an attic, so that's the only thing that's missing. There's no insulation on the crawl on the subfloor in the crawl space. And what would that do in this particular environment? Since it's well, it keeps the it keeps the inside of the house hotter when it's cold outside. It keeps the inside of the house cooler when it's hot outside. Okay. It's just like insulation in an attic. Okay, so it's just not insulated down no. there. No, right? again, and it's no one's gonna go down there and do it with the way everything is under there right now. But you know, if anyone ever came and told you that, that's you know, that's why I tell you. Okay. So. And then um, you know, there's a lot of wood trim on doors and whatnot throughout the house. It, Everything sort of is wearing well. You felt like in general everything's in good shape. Yeah. No, everything's fine. Yeah. Okay. Print, everything's indicative of its age. There's nothing beyond normal wear and tear. Everything's good on that. Appliances operated. Um, AC heater, water heater, all that's good. All the big money items. Again, you got about five or six blisters up on the roof in, in one des designated area, and that's again roofer might charge you 250 bucks just because they won't roll out for anything less. Right. You know, to fix something like that, but it's it's not a big fix in terms okay. of roof, roll the roofing. Great, and then you're gonna get the report to Paul tomorrow. I'll email everything with the report and the invoice tomorrow. You guys should have some time tomorrow. Okay, and with then Mark getting cc on everything I send you guys. And Paul. if you you can send the bill to him, yeah, email the invoice and the report. Great. Okay. Two different attachments on the same email. Thank you, Casey.